That is, a, that is a picture of a blue whale breaching. Breaching is when a whale completely comes out of water, clears and jumps and goes back. Joy of life. Imagine, through water, what force and speed must it swim at to be able to come clean out. You're talking about 190 tons becoming airborne. Ajeeb. Qudrat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is our Rabb, my brothers and sisters. This is our Rabb. Rejoice that Allah has given you the basira to recognize Him. Rejoice that you are not among those stupid people of the world who look at this and say this is an accident. Inna lillahi wa inna lillahi rajun. That is a scale diagram of a heart of a blue whale. Roughly the heart of a blue whale is the size of a car, an average car. The call of the blue whale, the sound of it is 188 decibels. What does that mean? It means it is louder than a jet engine. They have measured blue whales calling in California, off the coast of California. They have recorded them off the coast of Japan, across the Pacific Ocean. This means that if you were a blue whale, you could speak to your brothers and sisters in Australia without a phone. <laughs> the tongue of a blue whale weighs four tons, the size of an elephant. The mouth of the blue whale can hold 90 metric tons. An average caterpillar dump truck holds 10 tons. The mouth of a blue whale holds the equivalent of 9 caterpillar dump trucks. But it can't swallow anything bigger than a beach ball. I want to ask you, I want to tell you to ask, keep on asking yourself one question every time I give you a fact. What is the question? Say why. Say what? Why? Why must you create a mouth that holds 90 metric tons but it cannot swallow anything bigger than a beach ball? Ask yourself, if you were the creator, what would you do? How would you create? Think about that. Ask yourself why. The blow of the blue whale, and that's the, that the picture in the center, that is not the fountain off the coast of Jiddah, that is the blow of a blue whale, 50 feet straight up in the air. The calf of a blue whale drinks 400 liters of milk a day. If you had to feed the calf, you would need a whole dairy farm. <laughs> the blue whale eats krill and it needs and eats 8,000 pounds of krill, 8 tons of krill per day, which is 40 million krill. Now, you know what is a krill? That is a krill. A krill is a small prawn. Blue whales are shafai, so they eat prawns. They're not hanaf. <laughs> Interesting thing about a krill is that little thing has actually a lifespan of up to 10 years if it keeps clear of blue whales, obviously. <laughs> to give you an idea of how big a krill actually is, that's how big it is. The huge, the biggest, the Arnold Schwarzenegger of krills weighs one gram. Now imagine, if you were a creator, and you created a creature which is 190 tons in weight, more than 100 feet in, in, in length, what would you decree as its food? You would decree ships and sharks and you know, Yes? Why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decree that something which is that big eats something which is so small? What is the question to ask? Why? Let's go into the air. A bird called the bar-tailed godwit has the longest non-stop flight, migratory flight of 11,500 kilometers. 
it flies from Alaska to New Zealand non-stop now what does that mean and takes nine days and nights I want you to put yourself in the in, in, in the data what does it mean what does it mean to fly non-stop nine days and nights it means the sun rises the sun sets the sun rises the sun sets the sun rises the sun sets the bird is flying it means there is rain storms the bird of the bird is flying it means there are snow storms the bird is flying it means there are cities underneath the bird is flying it means there are oceans underneath the bird is flying it means there are deserts and forests underneath the bird is flying it means there is no food no water it doesn't eat it doesn't drink it doesn't sleep for nine days and nine nights they have discovered that the brain of the bird of this bar tail godwit half the brain sleeps and half the brain is awake and after a few hours this half sleeps and this half is awake they have no idea how and remember this is a small bird this is not an albatross coasting on 14 foot wingspans it's not taking it's it's not uh, taking advantage of thermals it's beating its wings for 11500 kilometers ajeeb eh? that's the map of where from where it goes to where and that's a flat if you look at look at it on the globe it's like that we'll go to another bird bar headed goose Bar-headed geese take off from Alaska, they go straight up, they hit the jet stream current at 33,000 feet and they go. And they hit the jet, they fly in the jet stream current for the same reason that your intercontinental airliners fly in the jet stream current to take advantage of the force of the wind, the fast flowing wind that circles the earth. Who taught the bar-headed geese that there is the jet stream current? What about the jet, jet stream current? You know what about the jet stream current? The temperature in the jet stream is minus 59 degrees Celsius. Take the same bar-headed goose, say Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, and put it in your freezer at minus 6, it freezes. The same bird flies at minus 59 degrees Celsius. The amount of oxygen at that temp at that height is almost non-existent. And you know what they found? They say that bar-headed geese actually breathe more efficiently in low oxygen atmospheres. What are they saying? They're saying the bird breathes better when there is no air. <laughs> 